Hello and welcome to this Photoshop photographic restoration tutorial. On, left, on the left hand side you'll see our original photograph and on the right hand side you'll see our, our restored version. The first step is to get an accurate and detailed copy of your original. So two main methods are firstly to scan your photograph which will give you a very detailed copy but sometimes can result in reflection. The other method is to use a digital camera to photograph uh, your original. So this uh, allows you to photograph from different angles, different lighting situations and that way you can bring together the multiple pieces of your puzzle uh, and avoid the reflection problem. The first thing we're going to do is to aim to remove this area of damage from the top of the photograph. So I'm just going to zoom into this particular area. Now while we're working we want to work non-destructively. So we're going to be using our healing tools uh, we want to make sure that any area, any areas we edit, we're going to add to a separate layer, so we're not working directly onto the background. So we're going to select the new layer tool here, and we're going to be using the healing brush tool. We want to make sure that the sample all layers is selected, and make sure your brush is a reasonable size for the area that you're working with. If you hold down Alt on the keyboard, it will select an area, and then you can click and transfer and clone that area to the area of damage. So I'd advise working in small steps and reselecting areas regularly, so ensuring that you, you select areas that will blend well, uh, so and gradually kind of working your way through. The other method is to use the Spot Healing Brush tool, which means you do not uh, select an area first, you simply work directly uh, into the area of damage. So both have their, their advantages. The next method is to use the Clone Stamp tool, this method will work a very similar, uh, very similar way, so uh, taking a, a selection or a sample and then transferring it directly over, over to the area you're working with. Uh, there, uh, using this method is very useful when you're working against edges that you don't want to blend uh, together, so to avoid any kind of fuzzy, fuzzy edges. So again, it has its advantages. So all the edits we've created so far are on a separate layer, so it's just very useful, so working uh, non-destructively. Uh, the next method we're going to show you is using the content aware tool. Now there's various methods of doing this but the one I'm going to show you is to is to use a selection. So we're going to select around uh, an area of damage. So we want to try and keep it fairly close in, so close into the area of damage but also not too far out. Okay so similar to as I'm creating here, so selecting the area. Then if you go to edit and fill and you fill with content aware. The, the method we're using where we're transferring information to the, the separate layer uh, means we're going to require a little bit of retouching around the edges, which is fairly simple. So we can get, make the brush the correct size and then just kind of working around the edge and blending, uh, so smoothing it in. Uh, so we're going to work, you can work a little bit more on that. Uh, also sample different brush sizes, it's very useful I feel to, to get, get the hang of uh, using a different brush size uh, and see how, how that kind of benefits and helps your, uh, your retouch. So try, try a little bit both. So that's, that's gradually getting there. Um, so it require a little bit more time to, to perfect certain areas. Uh, you need to go around and repair some of the, the spots so using the spot healing tool. So it's a very simple method. So going around, clicking away, removing the spots. Uh, when working like this, you want to make sure your brush is just a little bit bigger than the spot. Okay, so we're, we're aiming to not cause uh, uh, over-restoration, so we're not working into it uh, too heavily. Once you've worked into some of those areas of damage, then the next thing to do is work on your levels. Now, levels are very important, so it brings back the, the tones and the shadows, as you see from the, uh, the restoration on the right-hand side. So we're going to use our levels adjustment. And we can bring in the shadows and bring in the highlights to make improvements. So if you pull in the shadow slider, you'll see that obviously it's adding uh, adding kind of darker shadows. If while we're working you hold down uh, Alt, it will show you any areas of clipping. So as soon as you see those areas appearing, it means we've moved too far in, and the blacks are becoming too black. So we're bringing it to an area where we can just about be on the edge of that. The same will work with the highlights. Okay, so as soon as you see those areas coming in, there we go, so bring it to about there. So that's giving us our optimum uh, levels adjustment. So looking much, much better um, already. 
Uh, other tools that you can use are the dodge and burn tool. So if you want to selectively, selectively darken or lighten areas, for instance, if you want to add, uh, uh, add more kind of depth to these shadows here, if you select your burn tool, so this is the burn tool here, and choosing the exposure, we keep the exposure fairly low and getting a good brush size, we can then paint into that area. We have options here as well for mid-tones and shadows and highlights, so working into the area and darkening. Now, when we're working with this, we've got to make sure we're on the we're on our, our background layer to darken darken up the original. So it's taking a direct uh, response from that. We can also, if we want to zoom in a little, we can lighten areas. Now, the eyes are an area that we often need to work with with uh, portrait restorations. So if you select the dodge tool and make the brush the right size, you can start to lighten particular areas. And this, this is quite magic, so it brings back a little bit of life um, to your person. So using the the highlights there and also maybe burning in the, the pupils to darken up certain areas. There we go. Uh, other things you can try are using selective sharpening. So you can use the sharpen tool and you can sharpen certain areas. So again you've got the strength and this time we can place it onto a, a separate layer and as long as you select sample all layers. So you can go around and you can selectively sharpen certain parts. So just again being very careful not to overdo it. Uh, the same will work with softening as well, uh, but often not, not required as, as much with uh, restorations. A few other things you can try are, if we go to filter, we can then try sharpening globally, so sharpening the whole image. So if we ensure that we are working on the background layer first, filter, sharpen, and using smart sharpen. Uh, the method I like to use is to is to bring the amount up to the top and then uh, gradually move the radius until we get the desired effect. So if we go too far, then we see an obvious over, over sharpening and you can kind of bring it back. So we're aiming to not create extra, extra noise, so we're aiming to keep it quite subtle. So you've got to be really careful not to overdo this, this effect, so keeping it really, really subtle. Okay, so we have a global sharpening. Another thing you might like to try is, is despeckling. And despeckling will remove any of those areas of noise uh, that we might have created. So again, filter, and this time going to noise and despeckle. So there are other options too. You can try dust and scratches and reduce noise, uh, but despeckle will remove certain areas. Now it does have a, naturally have a softening effect, so you have to decide what what you're after really. If your original had a sepia tone, then you might like to add to yourself a photo filter. And there are many photo filters that you can choose from. So we can use warming filters to add that sepia tone. You can change the density. But again, it's respecting the original. So whatever you do to your photograph, you need to remember that you must respect the original. Remember that you're bringing these photographs back to life. So you need to respect how they would have looked and, and bring them in back into, the, uh, into modern times. Uh, so it takes many hours to, uh, well, unless you're, unless you're kind of really good at this, of course, it takes many hours to, to work into a restoration to, to, to make it uh, you know, nice and clean and uh, to bring it back to, bring it back to life. Um, so if in the, uh, the timescale we have provided, I hope, hopefully this has given you a bit of an introduction um, to photographic restoration. Um, so good luck with, uh, with your own restorations, and I hope you have fun.